In this video, you will learn how to build shared element transitions with Ionic React using Frame Emotion. What's up, Simonix, and welcome back to a very special video because today is not only a topic I wanted to talk about for a very long time, it's actually also the first time that I'm bringing in another content creator, another author into this channel. So, everyone, please welcome William Juan who created this tutorial. Because I wanted to create uh, more tutorials with other uh, people from the community and William was someone I worked with uh, already for quite some time because he helped me to create um, all the snippets for Ionic Blocks. He might help me for the Banana Project and he also helped me with some content. And here it is, William is presenting this tutorial himself. He's talking about how to create an expandable cut component, which I think is super interesting using Ionic React. So you can see this in applications like uh, Instagram where you click on something and from the card it pops out. He can actually describe it a lot better. Link to the tutorial right below the video where you can find all the code. And now please welcome William and enjoy the following tutorial. Shared element transitions is a common pattern in both web and mobile applications. You've probably seen this in the apps you use regularly. YouTube uses this pattern when you minimize and maximize a playing video. Instagram uses the same pattern when you tap on a photo on the profile or discover page, animating the photo from the grid to its enlarged full screen version. Shared element transitions improve the user experience of your applications by creating an association between the two views you're transitioning between. Take Instagram's interactions, for example. By enlarging and snapping the tap photo into position as it transitions from a grid view to a single photo view, it creates a stronger connection between the tap photo and the new page. It tells the users that they are looking at a larger version of the image they tapped. Let's take a look at how we can create a simplified version of the shared element transition as we create a list of cards that will expand into a full screen page modal when clicked. There are a few different approaches to creating this interaction, but this video will focus on using Framer Motion to create the animations in an Ionic React application. Framer Motion is a motion library for React that enables you to create complex user interactions using a declarative syntax. Framer Motion includes a robust set of animation utilities ranging from simple transitions to complex gesture handlings. We'll be primarily using Framer Motion's layout animations in this video to create the shared element transition. Let's start by creating a new Ionic React application by running the following command. Let's then install the Framer Motion's dependencies by running the following command. Let's run the app and get started. For simplicity, we'll use the default home page component for our tutorial. Let's start with removing the unused imports and updating the ion title. Next, let's clear out the ion content to prepare for what's coming up next. To create a consistent styling between Android and iOS, let's also add mode iOS to ion toolbar and ion header. Moving on to our styling, let's add a white background for our toolbar and set the title to be a dark blue color. Let's also set the ion content's background color to white to match the toolbar. For this approach to creating the shared element transitions, we'll be manually layering out the page using CSS grids instead of navigating to a new page or opening a new modal. Here is a 3D representation of how the two layers are stacked on top of each other. We'll start with creating the container of our list and the pop-up layer. We'll use a regular div element inside the ion content component and give it a class content container to add the necessary stylings. Let's now switch to the CSS file to set the stylings for the content container. We'll set the display to grid and set it to have a single full height row and a single full width column. This will allow us to stack the contents of this element along a Z index by placing the children elements in the same row and column. Moving back to our TSX file, let's add an ion list component and a div for the pop-up container. As I mentioned previously, to stack the pop-up container on top of the ion list, we'll need to set both elements to the same row and column of the parent's grid. We'll also need to set a higher Z index of the pop-up container element to guarantee that it will always be above the ion list layer. 
Before we continue with building our animations, let's first fill our list with dummy data so we have something to click on. Let's start with creating an interface for the post object. The post will have an ID, an image, and a name. Let's then create a post array that will act as the data source for our ion list component. We'll loop through the post array using the map operator, returning an ion item for each element of the array. We'll use an ion card component as a container to give it a nice shadow effect. Add an ion image component to render the image and an ion card component with an ion text to render the text below the image. Finally, let's set the mode for our ion list to iOS and remove the default padding. We'll also comment out the pop-up container for now so we can see the ion list and what we've built out so far. We'll switch to our CSS file and add some default styling for our ion item. We'll give it a white background and a width of 100%. Moving on to our ion card, add some margins so there are spaces between each card, and set the width to 100%. We'll also set the background color to white. Next, we'll give the ion text a font size of 1.5 and a font weight of 600, with a dark gray color. We'll then set the ion image to a fixed height of 250 pixels and a width of 100% with the object fit property set to cover. This will make sure that the image fills up the available space without leaving any white spaces around it. Now that we're done with our styling, let's go back to our TSX file and add some click events. We'll use React's useState function to keep track of the selected post state in our component. When a user clicks on a card, it will set the selected post variable to the data of the selected card. This will then display the pop-up element. On the other hand, setting the selected post variable to undefined will dismiss the pop-up element. Let's now attach an on-click callback to the ion card component that calls the setSelectedPost function, passing in the data of the card click. Next, uncomment the pop-up container and wrap it in a conditional. This will display the pop-up when selected post is tricky and remove it when it's falsy. We'll also add a click listener to the pop-up container so we can close the pop-up when we click on it. Let's now fill in the contents for the pop-up layer. We'll use the image and the title from the selected post variable in our pop-up layer. For the purposes of this tutorial, let's hard code a long string of text that will act as the details of the selected card. Let's switch to our CSS file again and set some stylings for the contents of our pop-up container. Set the ion image height to 250 pixels and the width to 100%. Similar to the image in the card component, we'll set the object fit property to cover. This will make the image fill up the entire available space. Let's then set the styling for our H1 element. Set the color to a dark gray with a font size of 1.5 and a font weight of 600. Let's also give it some padding all around. Lastly, Set the color of the paragraph element to a lighter gray with a font size of 1.1. We'll give it some horizontal padding to match that of our H1 element, and also give it a line height of about twice its font size to give it a more relaxed feel. Now to add our shared element transition. Framer Motion contains a special set of components prefixed with the Motion tag. These components accept animations related configurations as properties, allowing us to orchestrate our animations directly in our template. To create a shared element transition, we'll need to animate an element from its original position to its final position, and vice versa. In our case, the card and image should expand and reposition themselves as the pop-up is rendered. Framer Motion lets us create this type of animations by attaching a layout ID to the target element. Framer Motion then looks for the same layout ID in your template and animates the elements as each one is being added and removed from the DOM. Let's start with replacing the div in our ion card component with the motion.div element. Let's also give it a layout ID of the post ID prefix with the word card. Let's move to our pop-up container and replace the regular div element with framer motion's motion.div element. We'll give it the layout ID of the selected post ID prefix with the word card. Because the pop-up container is wrapped in a conditional, Let's create a fade-in animation by setting the initial opacity to 0 and animating it to an opacity of 1. As you can see, the cards are transitioning between the two views with a subtle fade. However, if you notice, no animations is applied as the pop-up is dismissed. This is because the element is immediately removed from the React tree. 
To play the reverse animation as the element is removed, we have to wrap the target element in Framer Motion's Animations Presence component. Notice that the animations is now triggered for both opening and closing the pop-up layer. Let's go further and do a similar animation for the images. The image should slide to the top of the pop-up layer from its current location in the card as we open the pop-up and vice versa as we close the pop-up. We'll do this by wrapping the images in the motion.div component and assigning a unique layout ID. While we're at the pop-up layer, let's start with the image in the pop-up. Wrap the ion image element in a motion div component and give it the layout ID of the selected post ID prefixed with the word image container. Now let's go to our ion list and wrap the ion image element in a framer motions motion.div component. This time we'll use the post ID prefix with the same word image container. Notice that now the image expands and shrinks as it transitions between the pop up layer and the ion list. Let's get fancy and add some more subtle animations to create a more polished experience. We'll start with animating the text in the card as the pop-up is being opened. We'll give it a nice fade in and out using Framer Motion by setting two variants for the element. We'll have a show variant with an opacity of 1 and a hidden variant with an opacity of 0. We can then set the duration and delay for each transition that Framer Motion will use to animate between the two states. We'll then use the animate property to determine the current state of the element. Notice that the text on the card fades out as the pop-up is being rendered, and fades back in when the pop-up is dismissed. Next, we'll add a fade in and slide up animation to our text contents in the pop-up container. Let's also throw in a slight delay for the paragraph elements animation to give it a nice staggering effect. We'll start by wrapping the h1 element inside a motion.div component and setting its initial properties. We'll set it to have an initial property of an opacity of 0 and a vertical translation of 20 pixels. We can then set the animate property to animate the element to an opacity of 1 and a vertical translation of 0. Similarly, we'll wrap the p element inside a motion.div component and set its initial properties to have an opacity of 0 and a vertical translation of 20 pixels. However, unlike the H1 element, we'll set a longer transition delay for the P elements animation to give it that staggering effect I mentioned earlier. And there you have it, a shared element transition in an Ionic React application with the help of Framer Motion. All right, that's it. Thanks, William, for this epic tutorial. I highly enjoyed watching this and following the code myself because it was actually like he was teaching me as well. And I just hope that you also enjoyed a slightly different voice on this channel. So if you enjoyed this, this might actually happen more uh, often in the future. If you don't enjoy it, well, it might still uh, happen more often in the future because I really want to bring in more developers that can press because I, I just can't create like everything. Uh, I try my best to do Angular and React and Swelled and whatever, but there are just some limitations in what I can do. So from time to time, I might bring in different creators and probably you're also one of them in the future. So feel free to reach out and approach me with a nice topic and you might also be part of this channel in the future. So once again, thank you William. You can find him on Twitter as well. Uh, he's a great developer and and of course, you should also hit the subscribe button for this channel so you get notified about the upcoming videos about all the great technologies in the future. Until then, I hope you have a great time with the expandable card or the shared transition, whatever you might call it, and then I will catch you in the next video. So until then, happy coding, Simon.